roll call. Commissioner Berkowitz. Here. Commissioner Osborne. Present. Mayor Fisher. Here. Commissioner Naughton. Here. Commissioner Marion. Here. Calvin Bonenberger. Not here. Chief Peterson. Here. Rhonda. Here. <laughs> <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Those people that have served us in the armed forces and other people that we want to Make the motion to approve the minutes from the, uh, the last meeting yet? December the 11th. I'll second that. Move and second it. Just make sure you approve. All in favor, say aye. Aye. I believe everybody voted aye. So that takes care of that. Okay, now we're going to have a presentation made by Will Mapco. Uh, are you ready and prepared? Or do you need more time? Or? No, uh, we are ready. Um, ready, willing. I'm ready, willing. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Tamika Graham. I'm a senior planner with the Plumbing Scenario Planning Council. And so, would, would you face the audience so they can hear too, or stand over at the podium or something? So. How's that? Talk a little louder. <laughs> Um, I'm also here with uh, my colleague, Dave Poole, the principal planner from Wilmatco, and you'll be hearing some uh, comments from him uh, this evening as well. Uh, we have a PowerPoint presentation, but we printed it off, uh, just sort of remembering that the, uh, the setup of this room is different. <laughs> so hopefully this is a little bit easier for some folks. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, we uh, want to say thank you for uh, placing this item on your agenda. We really do appreciate your time. Uh, Dave and I have been working uh, very closely with Cecil County uh, Planning and Zoning and also an advisory committee made up of a variety of uh, stakeholders, including uh, state representatives, local, as well as members of uh, the public. And we've been working for more than a year to uh, develop the Cecil County Bicycle Plan. So we're basically at the end of the process. Um, our purpose for being here this evening is twofold. Uh, we want to present to Rising Sun uh, the components of the, the final plan, as we promised you uh, back in, I believe, uh, March or April when we uh, came the first time. Uh, we said that we would come back and present uh, the final recommendations. Um, and we also are seeking a request, uh, seeking an endorsement uh, of the plan. Um, unfortunately, uh, we weren't unable to keep our original schedule. We hoped to uh, meet with you all before uh, the Cecil County Commissioners did uh, approve this. But, uh, nevertheless, we are still here. We do want to uh, present to you the final uh, recommendations. Um, the, document is also posted online. It's a really long document. And um, initially, we started printing off copies uh, to meetings and things. And then we noticed that you know, we're sort of wasting paper. So it is online for uh, people that. Is, uh, by chance, is this, the, is this the draft? 
if I've heard 2011, it's about 104 yeah, pages. Is yeah, that it? Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so it's pretty tough to read. So we've been uh, directing people now to, to go online and to download the document. It's really long. Um, that's also a link. You can get a, just the executive summary of, of the document as well. Um, so the presentation, uh, basically, um, on slide two, uh, it just covers, um, it's organized in a way that the document is organized. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the background. We know that when we came here before, there were a few of you that were here, and then uh, we do have some new faces now, so we want to bring everyone up to speed. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about uh, the bicycle network, uh, as well as some additional system improvements and then implementation and path forward. Um, on slide three, talking about the uh, purpose of the plan first, um, let me just say that there are numerous benefits uh, to bicycling. Um, it uh, improves the accessibility and efficiency of our transportation system. Uh, there are health benefits involved. It promotes uh, healthier lifestyles. There are uh, environmental benefits involved because it's a non-polluting form of transportation. Um, it also connects communities on a uh, more of a human scale. So there's a, a social element involved as well. So there are a number of benefits, also economic. Um, the genesis of this plan developed when we, uh, Dave and I were working with uh, the Elton Bicycle Plan. And there were a lot of issues that uh, came up with uh, getting residents not only within Elton, but other places, other towns, and also the points um, throughout the county. We weren't able to address that in full measure under the scope of the Elton Bicycle Plan. And so uh, there was a submission to the tool, and so uh, mainly from the stakeholders that were involved in Elton. Uh, we also found that through a, a public opinion survey, the 64% of survey respondents in Cecil County said that they desired better places to walk and bike. So we knew that uh, there was really a need for us to, to go back and to look uh, more comprehensively at uh, bicycle issues countywide. So the purpose of this plan was to develop a shared vision for the county as well as the towns because the plan includes unincorporated and incorporated areas of Cecil County as well. <coughs> Um, and we've really been pointing out that this is a, a strategic time uh, to begin looking at bicycle planning because we're, um, we're really at the beginning of a, a lot of growth that is expected to come to Cecil County in the next two to three decades. And uh, we can really avoid a lot of costly retrofits down the road if we, we wait too long until uh, growth really takes place. There's also um, a lot of benefits when considering um, a lot of the, the, um, the growth within the bicycle tourism industry that's really growing. Uh, we also see that there are a lot of uh, examples, not only in cities and places that are afar from Cecil County, but there are a lot of examples right in um, Maryland. Uh, uh, there's the um, uh, Williamsport, Maryland, that, um, Williamsport, Maryland, Hancock, uh, Frederick County. Um, there are a number of places throughout uh, Maryland where uh, there are small towns that are uh, really doing things that uh, have a big impact for uh, bicycle improvements. <coughs> Slide four uh, basically summarizes the five goals of the plan that uh, are laid out to achieve the plan's vision. Uh, they include uh, planning and engineering, education, encouragement, enforcement, and evaluation. Evaluation is really important because as uh, we begin to implement these things, we want to uh, measure our progress and make sure that we're hitting uh, the right um, targets. I'm on slide five for those that are following along. Uh, this summarizes the public outreach. Public outreach has been a very important part uh, of this planning process. We've actually spent a significant amount of time uh, reaching out to um, Cecil County at large and also visiting with each of the towns several times actually, and also going on to some uh, bicycle community events as well. And a lot of the comments that we've uh, been hearing um, uh, include uh, the desire for more off-road as well as on-road. There are also issues with safety um, and also funding. Um, the slide shows just a partial list of our outreach and uh, meeting activities. We've uh, been really busy trying to uh, really seek out comments from the public uh, to help inform uh, the plan that, uh, that I guess some of you have. Um, I also want to emphasize that this is this was and still is an open and uh, collaborative process, and we are really committed to working uh, with uh, the local governments. And uh, you know, we're here to listen to what you have to say and to hear what's important uh, to the town of Rising Sun as it uh, pertains to bicycling. Uh, chapter two, uh, slide six, 
Um, after we did the uh, assessment, looking at existing networks and also identifying where uh, the gaps are within uh, the, bicycle, the existing bicycle system, uh, we listed out uh, several uh, challenges and opportunity, and we sort of broke them out into categories of corridor, intersections, uh, and bridges. Um, and the plan we list out um, some of the countywide <coughs> countywide needs. Um, they include enhanced visual cues, such as warning signs, things to let uh, motorists know that uh, you may expect a bicyclist on this roadway because it is a designated uh, bicycle route. Um, other things like uh, enhanced intersection conditions, some of the issues that we work with with some of the other towns included, how do, how do you deal with um, blind curves and steep grades, such as um, in Port Deposit, that was uh, one of their issues. Um, also, bicycle parking um, is, uh, is lacking throughout um, the county and in many other towns. And I think someone just uh, mentioned as I came in that I parked my bicycle here. And I said, well, there, there isn't exactly a bicycle right here, so I'm not sure where I would park it. But those are um, um, sort of the, <coughs> these type of locations are the locations that we would recommend, those key uh, activity centers like a, a government building or you know a park or you know, some sort of um, employment center where, where large people where large amounts of people uh, would be getting to and they would want a safe and secure place uh, to park their bicycle. On slide seven, it lists let's say it shows a map of the proposed countywide bicycle routes. Uh, we actually uh, broke out the, the proposed routes into two. Uh, levels of hierarchy, the countywide routes, and then uh, the local routes. And each of these routes would complement existing uh, existing bicycle routes that are already you know, established, such as um, SHA's uh, designated bicycle routes, and they also uh, provide access to, to points of interest. The next slide shows a map of rising sun with the local routes. <coughs> Slide eight, and it shows, um, and the base of uh, the proposed routes for Rising Sun basically uh, built off of uh, the Maryland 2 273 corridor, which currently carries a significant amount of recreational riders through the town. Uh, we've also included uh, streets like uh, Mountain Walnut Street, as well as uh, Maryland 273 that might uh, provide, uh, excuse me, Maryland 274 that might uh, pro provide uh, better connectivity for those longer distance trips. Uh, there's also an opportunity um, to uh, connect the port deposit and other uh, areas outside the Rising Sun, maybe through the, the Aquarero Trail, uh, which is also part of the Lower Susquehanna Carriage Greenway. And um, by the way, they were actually very involved in this process, and uh, they did submit a letter of uh, endorsement to the county, and they're very uh, excited about this plan and excited to uh, connect their um, trail as well as seeing some of these other local trails uh, being connected as well. Uh, the next slide shows um, a table within the plan, uh, along with each of the town maps, we show a detailed table to accompany the maps, and it basically uh, just lists out all of the, the sediments that are shown on the map. So for uh, rising sun, you'll see in the, the table that uh, many of the additional segments uh, state install sharrows and share the road sign. And the reason for that being is that a lot of uh, your existing roadways are, you just don't have uh, the right of way for you know, an added bicycle lane or some other sort of bicycle facility. And so uh, what we're saying is you know, it would be more practical to have a, a shared roadway facility, which uh, throughout the town, your roads are already functioning as shared road facilities. However, uh, you are lacking some bicycle signage and pavement markings. Those um, key things that would uh, make conditions a little bit safer. They would uh, be those visual cues to motorists that you might be sharing this road with a bicyclist, and it also um, sort of has some other uh, implications as well. With you know, how how do motorists and bicyclists behave, you know, play nicely along along a, a shared roadway? As I mentioned, uh, bicycle parking. Uh, we added an additional slide here. It just gives a little bit more detail. When talking to uh, some of the towns earlier in the process, they wanted us to provide a little bit more detail about what do, what do you mean by bicycle parking? What types of bicycle parking? Um, so in that section of the document, it, it gives a lot of pictures. It shows you know, what are some preferred designs, not preferred designs, why those um, 
the, the designs that are not preferred, why they're not preferred. Um, sometimes certain rack types discourage usage or discourage misuse. So a rack that might support uh, two bicycles, if a person doesn't use it right, then it can only support one, and then you don't have enough um, racks for it for everyone. Um, there's also um, there have also been studies that show that uh, bicycle parking has a significant impact on ridership and also the perception of convenience. People want to take a move that is convenient, and if you get to your end trip uh, destination, you don't have a, a bicycle rack, then it, it isn't perceived as being convenient, and that's not uh, the message that we, we want to send. Uh, the next slide talks about bicycle transit integration. Uh, we know that uh, you know, most of the the, trans, the public transit in Cecil County is along the U.S. 40 corridor, but there are also um, you know, plans to expand in the future. Uh, but we still wanted to touch on that because some of the towns and some of the areas that we have been planning for, they are within, um, within the, the transit shed. And so I wanted to make that connection there as well. Um, the next slide, slide 12. This actually covers chapters six, seven, and eight. They're grouped together because they refer to the non-infrastructure improvements. So we're talking about things that are beyond paints and signs. A bicycle-friendly community is more than just paints and signs. It's a lot of other things like education, creating awareness programs about enforcement, making sure that you know, strategies are in place to reduce bicycle crashes or injuries uh, that are related to bicycle crashes. And also um, education, which is a, a way to uh, positively promote the benefits of bicycling. So those things are, are really important, um, and, and those chapters uh, focus on uh, strategies that, um, that go beyond uh, paints and signs. And some of the enforcement um, examples for enforcement may be a bicycle helmet promotion program uh, where people can come and, and get a free helmet or a reduced helmet. They can also pick up uh, brochures about how bicycle safety. Some people don't know the principles <coughs> like with traffic and not against traffic, but if you're walking, it's the opposite way. So little things like that uh, that really go a long way. Um, slide 13 uh, is implementation. Uh, this is a, a chapter nine of the document. Uh, the next to last chapter uh, basically summarizes all of the, uh, the recommended actions and they're broken out into two categories, the infrastructure, um, the paint, the signs, those sorts of things, and the non-infrastructure, the education, the enforcement. And then there are also um, some uh, policy suggestions as well, such as a maintenance policy that uh, when roads are about being maintenance, that the, sh the shoulders are also up, probably going to apply in most uh, places of rising sun, but some of the towns are really are relying on uh, their shoulder areas to, to move bicyclists to make sure that those areas are being paved because you know, a, a little bit of trash, a little bit of debris, that really does um, slow down uh, bicyclists that are using uh, the shoulder facilities. And you can see in this, um, the picture that's shown there, it's a really good example of how uh, poor maintenance of a shoulder really does um, impact um, you know, the bicyclist movement. Uh, the plan also talks about funding. Unfortunately, um, like you know, many plans that um, that are put together, there isn't a dedicated source of funding for this plan. But there are sources that uh, the towns can go after, and Cecil County um, can go after. But I will note that most of the, the recommendations in the plan are along state highways, and uh, the state uh, highway administration has been a part of this process from the beginning. Um, they were even a part of. Um, you know, the outcome process as well. Uh, they're very aware of what we're doing. They, you know, they've commented on the plan. And, uh, they like all of uh, the recommendations. And I, I think that we can really uh, look to uh, the state highway as um, an ally in trying to make uh, the roadways through Cecil County uh, better for uh, cyclists. There are programs such as um, state funded programs, such as the bicycle retrofit program. It's been around for a while. It is a little bit competitive, um, but I think that um, having a request from Cecil County would, would go a long way. Also through uh, the recent uh, Bikeways grant program, I think it's been around since about 2009. Again, that's a, um, a pot of money that hasn't been uh, tapped for, for any um, applications from Cecil County. Um, so that's, that's a um, possible source. And also looking into um, some private sources. There are a lot of uh, uh, private companies as private foundations that actually provide grants to local governments. And so you could apply for you know, a $500 grant and you have your, your bike rack 
for the town hall. So, so those sorts of things. And again, this is a, a long-term plan, so we aren't talking about implementing all these things in the next few years, but just really getting ourselves aligned. So when the opportunities come, then you know we're already in place to go after those things. And also having a plan in place really does put you in a better situation to go after federal funding as well. So there are a lot of benefits, even though we don't have the pot of money right now to do you know, a lot of things, it really does benefit the local governments and um, Cecil County in general for uh, to have this bicycle plan. For, uh, slide 14, key milestones, everything sort of uh, checked off. As I mentioned, we're basically at the end of this process. We've already, um, we're trying to uh, present to you a little bit earlier, but um, we've already gone to these county commissioners. They did um, approve it uh, November of 2027. Um, and our last, uh, our last order of business was to go to each of the towns and to uh, the Cecil County Commissioner, so we're sort of rising sun is sort of our, our last stop. And uh, um, I will also say that um, I mentioned that the Lower Susquehanna Heritage Greenway submitted a letter of endorsement. Uh, the towns uh, also submitted a letter of endorsement. And uh, Northeast is, um, they've actually gone beyond, a little bit above and beyond just a letter of endorsement, but they've actually, um, they recently uh, have gone through and updated their comprehensive uh, plan and they're including the Cecil County bicycle plan into the transportation uh, component of their, their comp plan. And, uh, Cecil County has indicated that they would like to, to do that as well uh, when they go through an update. So I <coughs> hope that I've kept it for you guys. I have a question. Sure. Now, the state of Maryland uh, has uh, been in on this. Uh, bicycle the plan for a number of years, I think. It says we have a state road highway plan in place, existing, or so it says here. Uh, my question would be why, when they did streetscapes in the various towns and made the streets narrower in like Perryville and Rising Sun, uh, they didn't take bikeways into consideration in doing the streetscapes projects. I mean, you're talking about retrofitting and we just did the streets and sidewalks. I don't think we're going to be doing them again. Yeah, that, 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 that is a question that has come up at least one time before. I will say that, um, I don't know if you're referring to the Maryland Bicycle and Pedestrian 20-year uh, access plan, but that really does take a very broad look at bicycle planning, and that was one of the benefits of actually doing this countywide plan because we can actually bring it down to the local level. If you look at the well, I'm um, looking the at our line. state highway, you know, your map here on the state highway plan, and it's an existing <coughs> designated bike routes, existing. Mm -hmm. And of course it goes through the town of <coughs> Rising Sun on 273, <coughs> existing plan, and yet when we did streetscapes, uh, we didn't make any allowances for that because the state, in their wisdom, I guess, determined that we didn't need to be part of it. They didn't have a local plan in place at the time. True, but they don't spend extra money without somebody telling them. That, this, this is part of the state highway system. I understand. You know, and whether we sure. had a local plan in place or not was immaterial because the state highway the State Highway Administration is in charge of that road out there, not Rising Sun. Rising Good. Sun really has nothing to do with that street. That's a question we can take back to SHA. Yeah. Uh, That's a good good idea because, you know, you're telling us our streets are too narrow for bikeways by themselves, and, you know, the State Highway Administration is responsible for that, not the town of Rising Sun. Especially on that state, there's two state highways, 274 and 273, which are our two state highways in, in town. You know, we don't have any control over that at all. Understood. This, is, this document is hopefully would, would not allow that to happen in the future. If the town had put, now that the town, if, if you do endorse this plan, you say, these are the streets that we would prefer to see bikes on. If the state were coming through again with another improvement plan, and I don't know when that should possibly be, yeah. Uh, 
tax liquid help to slow them down. I mean, they, ha they had the plan in place for years. Otherwise, we wouldn't have an existing. How long plan. have you had a relationship with State Highway? Well, we've been working on this plan for about a year and a half. Okay. So, anything that happened before that, I'm not sure exactly of when they. I'm not sure when they designated uh, the, the the estate routes. Yeah, we would have to dig back a little bit to find that out. You know, and I, I look at your path through Rising Sun and um, uh, going down Walnut Street from 273 Main Street down Walnut Street to Conowingo Road. I don't know that you have ever traveled that road, but it barely holds two vehicles. There's no sidewalks and there's drop-offs on each side of the pavement. And it is county road up to the top of the hill. So if you're going down the hill where we have property on one side belonging within the town and property on the other side not within the town, you know, this is a county road. We don't have any control over that either. And the road is mm, narrow. Very tight. Very narrow. Yeah, we, we've been down there. You've been down there. Yeah, I thought you had been. We, yeah. and yeah. I, we actually talked about it at the last we meeting did. as well. We talked about it, but there was still no you know, you know, decision to go down. Uh, Mount Street. Mount Street um, it's also County Road. But it's a wider road. It's a wider road. It's, it's a possible road, but it's also a county road most of the way. There's and very the is little of, of it that's within the here. called a, 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 a town road, municipal roadway. The, um, the no, chart the of the town road. It may be within the town, but it is not a town road because it's there's a, a sign road. there that says county maintenance ends okay. once you reach the top of right. the hill. Um, I also, also want to point out again that the chart behind the map lists the types of, of treatment. So for uh, Walnut and Mount Street, we know that there isn't enough width to be the separated bicycle lane. That's why we're recommending um, a share or um, some sort of signage. Uh, to and the signage is in the short term. Also, the signage <coughs> on 273 and 274 is state. They don't allow us to mess with their signs. Right. We're not, the recommendations that we're, we're bringing to you don't necessarily direct the town to do the work. That's not, that's not part of the plan. But the plan is, if you've endorsed it, if this is the plan that you want, then we submit this to State Highway and say, this is what the town of Rising Sun would like to see in terms of bicycle improvement. So if there are potential improvements in this list that are not something that you want to see, <coughs> then we pull those. But what you're saying is, if, if we endorse this this plan as you're submitting it tonight, as opportunities come up, it will already be part of the proposed system. Yes. And you can then take advantage of that. Right. So when the county's got some work, in, well, basically for signage, we wouldn't even wait to necessarily would go back to the county and say that these are the routes, the county routes, that the Rising Sun is interested in seeing signed as bicycle routes. And then that would go through their process. And what in the plan signage. would be Rising Sun's town's responsibility? Um, Usually, the, the local at the local level, you're looking more bike racks. I mean, those are those are improvements that um, they're relatively inexpensive. As Tamika noted, there are uh, funding sources to help with those <coughs> improvements. Um, really, if there are town streets that you would want to have something improved on, then that could be added to the plan. And this is a living plan. It's not. This is it. You can't make any changes. It's done forever. Um, really, what we're here tonight is what we heard last time we were here was uh, that you were looking for a connection to sort of divert some of the bikes that come up Main Street and they're on the hill and there are cars behind them as the cyclists are chugging up the hill and holding up traffic. And so um, you gave us this route to use Ryan Drive and then go down the Colonial Way to 274, which was a more desirable route. Other changes such as that are getting incorporated into the plan, but what it gives you is basically a framework for the things that the town of Rising Sun wants to see. Okay, and they still need to get out to 276, and so they're still going to go chugging up this hill out here so that they can get to 276, unless they go out um, Pierce Road. Let me make a suggestion. Reform a committee, Mr. Uh, 
Marion is in charge of Parks and Recreation, so he'll be in charge of the committee to come up with the plan. We could sit here all night and talk about bikes, but and and it, it's a good idea. But I mean to have some bike plan, but I don't think we can settle that here this evening. No, we're any not trying input, to settle it. Well, we're but you're just, just making a questions. critique of it, Joanne, and you know. I think it's a longer range, more extensive survey of what's here, what can be done. If we're, we're not going to... But if I'm wrong, you're asking for a decision tonight because you guys have to go forward with somebody else, correct? That's what you guys are asking for. So even if we formed a committee, we would be past the deadline. Well, I wouldn't, it's not as hard and fast as that. Um, I would say when you're looking for is an endorsement of the idea of the plan. If you want to say we endorse the idea of a plan, but we've got some details that we want to sit down and work out with you, then we'll move forward. Well, my concern is this is, if I say that I'm for this plan and I endorse it, I'm not going to regret it two or three years down the road if somebody decides they want to tear up somebody's nice sidewalks and, and build a, a, a bike lane. I, I'm not going to say that that's the town of Rising Sun's responsibility. Well, we, since we haven't, well, we are not in charge of the plan. So we would not say put in a bike lane. No one in the town, and if you're forming the working group, the town was, the town's got final say over what they want to see as part of the plan. One of the recommendations in the plan is to form an advisory committee to continue the conversation about bicycle improvement. So an advisory committee so is part of the, the recommendations to have members of the volunteer. residents <laughs> of, the, of the town and uh, Mr. Mary. And so, well, I, I actually think that. Uh, um, since you are in charge of streets, it should be um, both of us should be on the committee, um, streets and sidewalks. So. I agree. Well, we don't have to establish the committee tonight. <coughs> it's just that we're in favor of bikes or not in favor of bike participation in bike plans. I think that's what you're asking for tonight. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, the details are to be worked out later. You're just planners. You're not the implementers. Right. Okay. So, so I, I do have one more question. Okay. Since the county's adopted a plan, why does each municipality have to say we endorse it? Because it's incorporated and unincorporated, um, Cecil County. And also, you have your own local jurisdiction. The county can right. tell you what to do. So you would have to. Hmm. Yeah, we, we still have local. So to some local, you extent, to local. you just, you just <laughs> can't yeah. say, the county can't tell you. Well, what I do. will say that throughout this process, the county has continually said that we want the town to be involved because we don't want, we don't want to tell the towns what to do. So they've been very uh, cognizant of that yeah, issue. That's what I want to hear, you know, you know, why, if the county passed it, why does each municipality have to pass it? They just have to say, well, those, these are the routes within our town that we think that can happen. Right. Well, initially when we started this, the, the, the idea was to do a county-wide plan. And then we thought, well, it doesn't make sense to then come back to each municipality after the fact and go through the process again. So as it slowed the process considerably to make sure that everybody got involved, all the municipalities were, we were going through the process all together. Um, the county was probably a few steps ahead. They've already added some things to their, their ordinances uh, regarding like parking and things such as that. Uh, but Again, the county's probably not going to put out money for signs on county roads within Rising Sun if the town of Rising Sun doesn't really want that to be a, a bike route, that's a signed bike route. So that's why we're here really is to make sure that whatever improvements that are in this plan are going to affect Rising Sun are something that the town of Rising Sun is in support of. And I mean, I will go ahead and say I, I spoke to the uh, county executive regarding this plan. I spoke to Terry about it. And um, that's basically what she said, which was that it's really up to the town to decide on it. You know, Cecil County has decided this, so the towns decide. So. Thank you for incorporating some of the things that we have brought to you, to you before. I, I like the fact that you now have that <coughs> way to get around the big hill coming up Main Street by going up Colonial and then back over. And I think probably the planning and zoning should be involved in it, and that makes it in your area also. So are you asking for an endorsement letter? Is that what you're asking for? 
Yes. It's been converted such that, you know, it's a, an endorsement of the general plan and you'd like us to come back and, and work through some of the details and, and the acceptable us because, again, like I said, we're, we're, we want to be in this plan that everybody, all the towns can live with. That was our goal. Well, it's a cooperative effort in between the state, the county, and the town. So, you know, it's not all one person doing all, all everything. Even beyond. And it should be an integrated plan. Yeah. I was going to say that um, even after adoption, we'll make Okay. Can we have a motion that whatever your pleasure is? Um, I'll go ahead and make a motion that we. Um, endorse the bicycle master plan as presented by Will Mapco. Well. Or offer a letter of endorsement. Is there no, a we, letter of endorsement, correct? Okay. Absolutely. That's it. Say by a second. Did, well, I, I, um, let, me, let me restate that. I make a motion that we offer a letter of support for the proposed bicycle master plan presented by Will Mapco. Okay. The motion is that we, uh, the town of Rising Sun, offers us support for the plan as presented by Wilmatka. Is that? Is that yes, right? thank you, sir. Is that? Okay, do we have a second? A second. Okay, move to second. Is there any discussion? Anybody from the audience? <coughs> yeah, I was wondering what the cost is this and who, who's going to pay for it. I mean, it kind of seems like quite a fiddle of our. <coughs> Well, one of the um, things that we pointed out throughout the plan, um, actually in Chapter 9, and the implementation that we tried to, uh, well, we actually did provide a uh, cost, uh, per Wait, how much is it? cost per unit estimate of uh, each of like, the different recommendations, like a share of our bicycle parking. Um, uh, one of the things we also pointed out as well is that some of these uh, recommendations um, they would get implemented when uh, a road is uh, going, through their regular, going through their regular maintenance program. There are dollar amount calls for estimate is in Chapter uh, 9, but we haven't said that this whole plan is X amount of dollars. Um, I think that it's a little bit difficult for us to do that because um, you have so many uh, different um, things that you have to take into consideration. What if you provide 10 racks, or what if you just decide to provide 5 racks, or what if you provide so what's 10, the most ten miles it possibly of cost? Adopting the plan does not does not what are looking for. We're not at that point. It does not yeah, uh, force not. anyone to pay any money right now. There's no dollar figure attached to the plan because it's not say once you've got right. the plan you have to go and do this and this and this. What the only way this plan proceeds is if the county and the towns wish the plan to proceed. So it could, unfortunately, it could be if a plan that gets adopted and puts on the shelf something. There's just no cost. No cost. Every time County or town says, What do we have to do to get this? Then we sit down and work out what the cost of that is. So, so do you guys work for free right now? Or how does someone's getting paid? We are not consultants. We're not, We're not consultants, getting paid yeah. to do this plan. This is part of our normal They're plan. separately funded. It's not out. It's town. Yeah. We actually provide planning assistance to each of the towns. So if Rising Sun wanted us to come out and do a pedestrian plan that will be a part of our, our work tasks. So, so if Rising Sun decided they didn't want anything, Rising Sun wouldn't get charged anything Correct. after this. Right. Okay, because that would be great. <coughs> I, have, I have a question. Okay, I, I have some discussions. Okay. Oh, the bikes right now are allowed to share the road anyhow, right? They don't have any special markings or anything like that for them to share the roads currently, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. So I'm trying to understand exactly purpose of spending all this money to um, put signage and stuff up to let people know that it's okay to, that, you know, bikes are sharing the roads. I mean, I go through these back roads going to New London all the time, and roads that really I wouldn't think a bike should be on, and bikes are there all the time, you know. And you, you know, I am case, aware. In those cases, they bike at their own risk. Well, sure, everyone right. does. What, what, you would, what the county is looking to do is <clears throat> designate some roads that they would prefer to see bikes on and sign those roads so that vehicles and cyclists know this is a road that's to be shared. So laws change with that? I don't think it changes any laws. I don't see what the purpose is then. I mean, you're, we're going to spend a lot of money for signage when that is to rule the road is your share with bicycles, period. So putting up extra signage to, to reiterate that is kind of futile as far as I'm concerned. 
and then additional cost. What may seem obvious to some people is not obvious to everyone, and some people don't understand that sharing the road is is a law. You know, cyclists do have a right to be on the roadway. Um, there are studies that uh, show that things like signage and pavement marking actually do improve um, a little bit of the, the safety issues. And as I mentioned in the public outreach, that a lot of people did bring up the issue of, of safety. Mm -hmm. um, we heard from some residents that said, "Well, I like the bike, but you know, I don't feel safe out there." So maybe, you know. If you have improvements like that that don't cost a lot, and that's one of the things that we, we did try to, to take into account, what can we do that might have an, an impact, a positive impact that isn't very costly? Because building you know, separate facilities and doing a lot of those things do get a little bit expensive compared to you know, a sign that's 150 bucks or, or something right. like well, that. Well, I just think there's a lot of state roads that could use that money more so than implementing some new signage well, and things that educate your people. Decision. Uh, oh, no, I'm giving not, my opinion. So Ask for I, opinions I and questions, I'm giving mine, so I'm giving my opinion. We, we need to get back to what the town needs to do. Thank you, Vince. Mm -hmm. Thanks. My discussion, Stephen, has to do with your wording uh, and endorsement of the plan as proposed here is eliminates the need for our committee to uh, come up with alternative uh, areas. I like the areas that you came up with, um, and I think signage uh, helps because people do forget that bicycles are out there. But uh, you're s and saying, uh, making a motion to endorse the proposed plan as presented bothers me. I would, I would agree with Joanne in the aspect of I would. And I'm not sure if this would be okay, but I would like to put in there that it's non-binding. I don't want something that's going to... Okay, I guess, I guess that's why I said proposed. That way I was, I was indicating that this isn't written. proposed, that means that we're looking at this proposed thing and we're accepting it. But if we say we're, we are accepting a, the idea of um, <coughs> creating a bicycle plan mm -hmm. for our town, Okay. I would go with that because that's really what you want. You want us to say that we are in, support of in favor plan. of a bicycle plan for this town. Not necessarily oh. this plan, but something similar. If you, if you want to make a motion to amend my, my motion, that I think so that a friendly amendment, that is fine. Um, I have a little bit more discussion if I may real quick. Um, Oh, wait, we get the motion before you start. Well, he has discussion on this. the original. Before, before you um, make some yeah. Taxpayers' you. dollars. How, how much taxpayers' dollars are we talking that are going to be spent towards this? Can we just? It's all determined by what the county and the towns decide they actually want to proceed. We're not at that point yet. We can't. You've got to have a Well, not there's not an agency that we're not feeling friendly mandate what gets done. No, but what I'm asking is are you going to put forward and say, you might want to be interested in, in uh, higher taxes. No, to that's not. Okay. We're not going to suggest higher taxes. Okay. Really, what you're going to get, and this is at the county level, a framework. If the county has designated some routes, or even asked SHJ to consider some routes and provide provide you know improvements, the next large road project that would come through would include the incorporate okay. those improvements in that project, so that it wouldn't be. We don't go back and retrofit because. That's expensive and difficult to do in many cases. Okay. We, the people of Rising Sun, have control of what happens in Rising Sun to a certain extent. Yes. As much as you do now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeff. I would just like to add my voice to uh, anything that comes through a government program is hardly ever contained within the estimated cost. And well, all we won't get very, into all very, that. Very, that's very philosophical very arguments, and we're down to a, a definite uh, action that we want to look towards and plans towards. And, mm -hmm. and I think some of the comments are, are getting too far into the details of what happens because none of us know what's going to happen right at this moment. So, okay. Ready for my motion? I'm ready for your motion. Uh, I would like to make a motion to amend Stephen's motion on accepting the proposed local bicycle routes and instead say that Rising Sun is endorsing um, 
the well, idea it's of it's a whole new motion, right? Why don't you just make a new motion and then we well, can so we have to vote on first. Yeah. first. No, we vote on the amendment first. Well, if I'm making a whole new motion, then I'm not making an amendment. Well, then we'll vote to withdraw the first motion. How about that? Do you want to do it that way, or you want to try to wiggle words around? Um. I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Stephen has made a motion to withdraw his motion. All no, I withdraw my motion. <laughs> That's all I have to do. It's off the table. It's off. Okay. And Stephen, I would again defer to you because you speak so eloquently. Would you please rephrase the motion? Actually, I think what you said was. Perfect. I think it was better than what I said. So why don't you go ahead and make a motion? Well, what did we say? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, okay. I make a motion that we endorse <clears throat> the idea of local bicycle routes and bicycle uh, pathways and signage uh, without actually adopting the proposed local bike routes in this because uh, we really need more time to study it and make sure that those are the, the proper routes and we will form a committee to take care of that. I second that. Okay, well, I don't know why I'm, you have it down, Rhonda? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, and motion, you know, do we have a second? We second. We second. second. Okay. Okay. Is there any more discussion of that motion? Not. All in favor say aye. 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 You said no. You said no. You? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, my yes. <clears throat> okay. Oh. Oh. The motion passes. Okay. Now thank, thank, thank you guys that. very much. Thank you. And when you're ready to, to form a committee? Please contact me. Uh, Do you have a card? Yes. Okay. All right. We have an honored guest here with us tonight that did, did a heroic thing in the town of Rising Sun. He was the man of the hour and responded in a heroic fashion and uh, I guess spoiled a robbery in, in, in place. Are in progress. So uh, we need more of that. We need participation of all the people, and it's not what we do; it's what we do collectively that counts. So for that, for that, we're going to give a certificate of recognition to Sergeant uh, Joseph Appleby. Uh, you come forward. Sergeant. retired Sergeant Appley of the Maryland State Police and whereas acknowledges that his heroic action disarming a robber with a loaded handgun aimed at the sword clerk inside the chrome Derrick and Deli located in the 200 block of West Main Street and whereas recognizing the danger of the situation and that his action may have prevented death and injury. Whereas for this significant act of heroism, we salute him. Therefore, on behalf of the Rising Sun, I am pleased to offer our sincere thanks and honor Mr. Appleby for his brave and heroic act. Thanks, sir. Thank
David Taylor. Thanks for coming. Thank you for your time. I feel underdressed. <laughs> Are you going to preach? Would you like me to? No. Maybe not now. Maybe not now. Okay. <clears throat> I have uh, just a couple things to share. My topic is community enrichment. Is that the way it was written down? That's right. Enhancement yeah. enrichment? Okay. <clears throat> Could we use either one of those today? I am, uh, has anyone seen the Lincoln movie? Anybody have it on their list of ones that they plan to see at some point when things calm down? Yeah. I think most of us feel that way. Um, I feel like that, that movie, if you, if you go have a chance to go see it, it really shows the art of compromise and the fact that you really don't need to agree with a person that you're trying to come to a consensus with, but you need to uh, take the approach of having two ears and one mouth. When someone is speaking, be quiet and listen. And don't necessarily be thinking about what words that you want to try to say next. Uh, I think you probably find this within a relationship that's, that works well. Um, I always used to. Uh, attribute a quote to Lincoln which is wrong. So if I've ever quoted this to you, I, I apologize because it's, uh, people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. Have you ever heard that attributed to Lincoln? It has been many, many times. Turns out he, didn't say, he did not say that. But here are a few things that he did say, and I would just encourage everyone, um, both around here as well as just um, anyone here, I just uh, actually consider to focus on a few of these words and see if there might be something to learn from them. All of these are verified to have come from Lincoln's mouth or pen. I am a firm believer in the people. If given the truth, they can be depended on to meet any national crisis. The great point is to bring them the real facts. That's one. Another one. I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. I will prepare and someday my chance will come. If there's anything that a man can do well, I say let him do it, give him a chance. This is a, a little humor in here. If I were two-faced, would I be wearing this one? <laughs> if you look for the bad in people, expecting to find it, you surely will. It is better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to open one's mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> Not saying that that applies to anyone here. Famous one here, my dream is of a place and time where America will once, be, once again be seen as the last best hope on earth. My great concern is not whether you have failed, but whether you are content with your failure. <coughs> Nearly all men can stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. Never stir up litigation. A worse man can scarcely be found than one who does this. Public sentiment is everything. With public sentiment, nothing can fail. Without it, nothing can succeed. The best thing about the future is that it comes one day at a time. The best way to destroy an enemy is to make him a friend. Last page. The dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty, and we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think and act anew. The people will save their government if the government itself will allow them. The probability that we may fail in the struggle ought not to deter us from the support of a cause we believe to be just. <clears throat> the things I want to know are in books. My best friend is a man who will get me one I ain't read. Another human. Last three. The way for a young man to rise to improve himself, hmm. the way for a young man to rise is to improve himself in every way he can, never suspecting that anyone wishes to hinder him. 
These capitalists generally act harmoniously and in concert to fleece the people. Isn't that the truth? Last two. Things may come to those who wait, but only the things left behind by those who hustle. <laughs> to stand in silence when they ought to be protesting makes cowards of all men. So those are some things that uh, might somehow, if we apply them, lead to uh, community enhancement. Last thing, we lost this man to heaven. So whether anybody had a chance to read any of his books along the way, but Zig Ziglar, uh, lived well into his 80s. Uh, I had the chance to meet him when I was a waiter in a restaurant down in Potomac, Maryland. Um, most enthusiastic person of his, of his age that I ever met and just filled with wisdom. And uh, was doing motivational speaking right up until his very last year. He read something, he wrote, over the, he wrote uh, See You at the Top, which is his best selling book of all time. This was his second best selling book, which was his sequel to that called Over the Top. Well, he put together something at the very end, which I'm going to finish with this. I have some ideas on the future of the town. Um, I believe in this town. I think there's some great things that are going to, that are going to be in store. Um, I hope that everybody has resolutions for 2013 that include really moving this town forward in a, in a major way. I appreciate the commitment of each and every one of you. Um, I wanted to particularly thank you, Bob, for the diligence and your commitment to going out and squeezing the flesh on hot days, um, knocking on doors and uh, engaging people in conversation, showing that level of commitment to, to the process. It's uncommon, and I think you're to be commended for that. Uh, I don't always, that doesn't necessarily translate into a vote of confidence, but I just wanted to say I respect you for, for having done that and getting out there um, and we'll talk more about Thanks. the future. So here's what he wrote called the top. Let me give you a sip of water to be able to that. I know I've probably used up my time. You, you didn't have time since you're on the agenda. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I go out to the couch and sometimes have this next to me on the treadmill. The kids, because of my age and the gray hair, maybe the way I'm moving on the treadmill, say, is that an oxygen tank? <laughs> <laughs> so it probably will be. Maybe I should have the two sitting next to each other, you know? So. There's coffee in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I needed it so you wouldn't see my knees on it. All right. So, the top. I really just, this has reference to God a couple places. I hope that resonates with everybody. If it doesn't, well, see you in church on Sunday. The top. You are at the top when you've made friends with your past and you are focused on the present and optimistic about your future. You have the love of friends and the respect of your enemies. You are filled with faith, hope, and love, and you live without anger, greed, guilt, envy, or thoughts of revenge. You know that failure to stand for what is morally right is the prelude to being the victim of what is criminally wrong. You are mature enough to delay, to delay gratification and shift your focus from your rights to your responsibilities. You love the unlovable, give hope to the hopeless, friendship to the friendless, and encouragement to the discouraged. You know that a success or a win doesn't make you, and a failure or a loss doesn't break you. You can look back in forgiveness, forward in hope, down in compassion, and up with gratitude. You are secure in who and whose you are, 